previously on Unbalanced Encounters. We see a one-road, snow-covered town. Is there a Zisha, Alzira? Zisha? Who wants to know? Your daughter. You let your obligation to us die. And as far as I'm concerned, my daughter died with it. Forgive me for seeing a man dying of thirst and showing him to water. I hope one day you will have the kindness to do such a thing too. Safra is going to bend down, take off the ring, and push the body into the water. The giant crystal worm bores its way into view. June, I need you to roll me a d10. It's a nine. You aged nine years? Nine years! There's something wrong with my magic. Written in something's blood. Leave. I let go of the rope and go back down. The rest of you see the eastern hills. They are gone. Welcome to another episode of Unbalanced Encounters, the only show that dares to ask, what if we saved all of the dungeons and all of the dragons to the second year? Yay! I'm your host, Patrick Parini. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi. We've, ha- we've had a dragon. Listen, Sphinx, does Sphinx count? Does we've Sphinx had a dungeon. Count? <laughs> we've had a dungeon. Of course they count. Have we had a dungeon? Ridiculous. Yeah, in a flashback yeah, or something. <laughs> there, was a, there, was a dungeon, there was plenty of dungeons in... um. Uh, uh, Agrivar. Yeah. There's the dungeon we don't remember. There's the dungeon you don't remember. There's the There's dungeon, the dungeon that never know. existed. There's the bar mm-hmm. we always <laughs> went to. That was a dungeon, basically. Is that a dungeon? Is it a secret underground? Is it is it is a is a well advertised secret underground fight club a dungeon? These are the philosophical questions I feel like on our balance account. <laughs> where we uh, where Isaac and Guard saved what's her name from was actually a dungeon because she was trapped mm. down that there in like a prison. So that was basically a dungeon. Oh, yeah, is a yeah, prison. That was a dungeon. That was a dungeon. Yeah. See, well, we're going to ask you one, another baby episode of Is It a Dungeon? <laughs> Wait, is it a dragon? That needs to be a new podcast because that's Let's amazing. go. I love it. <laughs> Patent pending by <laughs> Sam. Oh, fuck. Uh, well, anyway, we're saving most of the dungeons and, and, and pretty much all of the dragons for uh, honestly what is our second year of this fucking show. So uh, we, we got oh, there. Wow. We got there in the end. We got there in the end, friends. I appreciate you for being on this journey with me. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're, I think we're pretty much done, As right? Like that's, this is the last episode, actually. <laughs> all we need is to, ch- it's, it's, uh, it's like bird watching bingo. You just check dungeon, check dragon, and then you're I, yeah. I'm going to be honest, Pat. I prefer yeah. our dragons to be a little more um less of cowards if that's the dragon we're thinking of or am i thinking of the god uh you're probably thinking of the god yeah i thought we were calling him a dragon them a no, dragon. no 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 jonathan is not a dragon uh jonathan is, is very far from a dragon he might be a bitch though that's up to you uh and our listeners at home speaking of which jonathan is gone question mark who is jonathan don't worry about Jonathan's it. Jonathan's the god. Jonathan's the giant turtle in the background. Jonathan's of the, the god uh, that Isaac refuses to tell you guys yeah, about. Yeah, Jonathan's the god that Isaac refuses to tell you about. Is actively gaslighting the whole party about the existence cool, of. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. Okay, oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, all right. Go on. As the gaslight girl <laughs> boss here, <laughs> I feel attacked. I need that. No, I'm sorry. I need that on a like a nameplate. I need hello. My name is Isaac Axe Drummer, and I will be your gaslight girl boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> oh man, I think Harissa just thinks he's crazy because he was just shouting to the walls um, about them being a pussy, and uh, <laughs> shit just happened <laughs> did after I that. Say that? Oh god, <laughs> did you say that? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. That was. 
canon that did really happen. And then things Ah, got worse. Yeah. Harissa. Hello. (laughs) Harissa, you are the first to gain your bearings. I think that Sphinx is jostling you a little bit in the snow. And we see you kind of shift and sit up, shake some snow off. And as you start to look around to figure out where the fuck you are, there's nothing. Snow in all directions. The hole that you just saw June climb out of seems to have collapsed in. You don't see evening's dawn. It is too blindingly snowy to see what is very far off in the distance, but before... The mountains collapsed. You could see the shadows of mountains. You could see the walls of the cliffs in the distance. You can no longer see them. And I'm curious, how is Harissa feeling? Confused. And in that kind of trying to shake herself out of this, like, what the fuck, turning around to count heads, and then suddenly realizing there is no guard then panicked. Could you please roll me a wisdom saving throw? Fourteen. You hear in the back of your mind, this is hopeless. This is pointless. These idiots are going to get me killed. What's your passive perception? Sixteen. You feel a tension in your neck that feels like Something has gotten a hold of your brain stem and is squeezing. I think just she's going to rub her neck just out of like, ah, oh, what the fuck? You know, when you've got like a crick in your neck and you're just kind of rubbing and you're like, <sighs> she has had a lot of these thoughts just, you know, without being um, brainwashed over the last few weeks. Um, <laughs> so this is just like a right. weeks. Yeah, there's yeah. <laughs> months. Uh, <laughs> There's no distinguishing fa- like feature to this, right? Like this is just another one of those intrusive, somewhat selfish thoughts. June, you're uh, probably the furthest away from the rest of the group. And as you start to come to, you see faint blue pulses of light emanating from Isaac and Harissa and this as of yet unnamed Agra soldier, you get roughly where they are, but you can't really see them through the driving snow. And I think you take a second to sort of glance around and you realize that you don't see guard and you don't see guards bond. Guard, guard. And she'll jump, like dive into the snow and sorry, frantically digging out the snow and yelling his name, guard, guard, guard. And like, just trying to dig up as much where it collapsed in. Give me a wisdom saving throw. It's a 15. In the back of your mind, you hear, he is dead. Leave him. And it's not your voice. No, fucking leave him, that asshole. What's he... No. Do I? Can I keep digging? Yeah, of course you can. Okay, cool. I'm just, I'm, I'm digging. I'm like a snow plow thing. <laughs> just tons and tons okay. of snow spraying out. Isaac, you are the last one to get your bearings. You have had what might be the worst two consecutive days of your life. Uh, that's debatable. <laughs> yeah, it is, actually. <laughs> so I have had worse. And you uh, are kind of roused by Prometheus is kind of gently tugging uh, on your beard, just like trying to get your attention, chittering because you no longer have speak with animals up. And as you come to, you see Harissa oh. scanning the horizon, June frantically throwing snow everywhere, And a very distinct absence of Jonathan. Oh, you bitch. 
<laughs> Just the whole oak. All right, I sit up. Oh, really? Really, we gonna play this game? All right, Prometheus, let go of my bed, please. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving, I know Porky said leaving, but like, oh my goodness, as someone who's run away from a lot of his problems, this is kind of this is kind of low. Well, now I can say whatever I want. Fuck you, Jonathan, and just shots <laughs> that into the uh, Can I get deck saving throws from everyone? <laughs> sure, absolutely. DC 16, uh, plus three to Cypher. Marissa, yeah. Oh, I oh, plus three. Okay, great. I had 16 anyway, but okay, 19. 12. That'll be a 20. Nice. <laughs> no, no, you heard me. <laughs> uh, June, you go ass over end into the snow as wow. the earth rattles once again. And Isaac, you have the vaguest sense of divinity slipping further away. So you're just going to leave all this behind because you're scared. That's okay. We'll make it better. We're going to make it so much better without you. And you ain't, you're not going to have a single thing to say when all of this is going to be even more fantastic. And and all the people are going to be more happy without you. And Give me a wisdom save. That is a 13. Maybe he's right. Running away is a good idea. Sure as hell beats getting my ass kicked every, well, day it seems. Isaac would hear that, but with just this journey alone that he's had, as well as how furious he is, I think he'd just keep yelling. <laughs> the caves were awful, covered in worms. You need to get that checked out. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this today. And um, he's gonna <laughs> summon CJ. <laughs> What does CJ look like in the oh, snow it's be snowy and rock? Oh, that's um, cool. You know, the pine trees? That is his fur. And it's like, that's very there's a cool. cover of snow throughout that, and his oh. tusks are a lot longer, like a mammoth's. That's really cool. fucking He's cool. He's like a Christmas tree pig. Mm -hmm. Christmas tree pig. <laughs> Big hog father energy. I'm yeah. here for it. 100%. Yes. Oh my God. He's just, he's, he's, he's just a, a, a big boy right now. Like, yeah. I love it. And he's like, come on. And he gets on top of CJ. And whatever, wherever he senses, if there's yeah. a direction, without even saying anything, he's just going to start up CJ. Start up the truck. <laughs> and he's, and he's going to start scooping people. Passing Harissa, dragging her onto the back of CJ. What passing the? June. Isaac, what the hell? Reaching no. out, just grabbing no. her. Guard, where is guard? When has God ever just left us behind? And we cut guard. You sit up, having fallen on your ass as the earth crumbled beneath you. And you take a second to take stock and you glance up. The hole is gone. Do you have dark vision? I don't think so. Yeah, neither did I, which is why it's fucking weird that you can see. There's no light here. There's no here here. You are looking off into an endless expanse of purple void. And the only thing that you can see of substance is a rope ladder that seems to go nowhere. I look around. I see the ladder. I climb the ladder. How long do you climb the ladder for before you start to give that a second thought? Six hours. <laughs> Fucking Christ, my dude. <laughs> yeah, Guard is not, if not determined. Yep. I, I, that love that. I love that. <laughs> After about six hours, it occurs to you that there maybe is no longer a top to this ladder. I climb down. Another six hours. It does actually take you another six hours. <laughs> Not one of those magic ones where you, as soon as you turn around, you're just back at the... With, with, with half a day of climbing, I just want to know what what are the what's vibes? Going what's yeah, the what's going on? What's the thoughts going through Guard's head? I think for most of the climb up, Guard is just thinking that this is the place, this is the way I need to go. 
not much more. Every now and then, maybe the the Mykonid, like, chirps in his ear. And then I think as he climbs back down, he starts to question whether or not he made the right decision to fall down into the pit. <laughs> and is trying to focus on that idea that there is a creature or something out here that is connected to paintings he's seen under Agravar that Big Paul mistook for him. And he's trying to focus on that idea and not worry too much about the fact that it seems like he's just in a purple haze dimension. Do me a favor and roll me a perception check with advantage. Excellent band name, by the way. Purple Haze mm-hmm. Dimension. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really oh, good. Oh, that is good. Yeah, PhD. That's a natural <gasps> 20. <gasps> cool. We're starting a band. We're doing it. Yeah. Also, that 20 is very good. Sorry, I got excited <laughs> about two things at once there. <laughs> <laughs> it's song. D20. Guard. Mm-hmm. With about a half hour left in your downward climb, you start to hear the sounds of movement off in a vaguely northerly direction. And that that direction is kind of an assumption. There really isn't like a directionality to this space. But when you think about like, oh, which direction is that in, you can kind of make sense of it. You get a sense that there is physicality to this place. It's just a little abstract. And you're reckoning with that as you hear the sounds of movement and jostling in that direction. I start swinging the rope ladder in the direction of the noise so that it's sort of penduluming me back and forth. And then I release and try to fall in the direction of the noise. (laughs) For 30 minutes. You. I forgot that I was 30 minutes up. I'm guard. I apologize. (laughs) (laughs) The, The... you should, you should probably die here, but the wild thing is you don't. You soar through the air, practically weightless, falling imperceptibly over time. And after about 30 minutes of gliding through the air, you hear something beneath you, muffled, almost a scream. And you just kind of keep going as you continue to move forward you hear it fading into the background um i'm gonna take out uh a javelin and i'm gonna throw it as hard as i can in the in the opposite direction that i want to go to see if i can like push myself backwards Uh, go ahead and give me a uh give me an attack roll reckless a 13 you start hurtling backwards and towards the ground you crash into a small pond, taking five points of bludgeoning damage from the fall and six points of acid damage from the pond. And it splashes up over you thick and black, and you hear from somewhere under its surface, Uh, I reach around in the pond of acid for the thing making the noise. Uh, go ahead and give me an athletics check. It's a 16. Yeah, that absolutely clears it. You wrap your hand around the... You, you feel some, like, clothing, some some kind of, like, reed material, and you, like, wrap your hand around it uh, and start to drag. Are you going to try to get out of this pond? I'm trying to pull the thing out before I'm trying to get out. Okay, you... <laughs> Pull this creature out of the pond, and it goes, bah, 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 bah. Oh, Mr. God, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> it's Reevesy. No! <laughs> the God himself. Reevesy. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing here? Uh, I had an assignment. Do you need help? Yes, I was very close to being permanently eradicated from existence, I think. I'm not really sure how that works, Dead, death after death, but it wasn't a good situation. Hang on, and I'm just going to okay. put, put him over my shoulders and start making my way out of the pond. Appreciate this, God. You're a lifesaver. Uh, okay, you're going to try to get out of this pond. You get to the edge by the end of your turn. This is very much difficult terrain, uh, and it is, it, is, it is pretty large. It's like, you know... You were kind of dead in the middle of it. It's probably about 
12 feet across, give or take. Uh, so you get to kind of the edge and you're, you're, you're about to get out at the edge of, at the end of your turn there. Uh, and it is going to take its turn. Card, does a 10 break your AC? Nope. Didn't think so. All right, that's a little better. Does a 23? Yes. Cool. Uh, you take six points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. And 18 points of acid damage. A bit of this pond, like, surges up and smacks you across the head. It's your turn again. I'm going to take half my movement. I'm going to slosh to the edge of it. Chuck Reevesy over. <laughs> Start climbing my way out. Uh, you get out of this pond and you see it like surge up and stare at you? Get behind me. I'm pretty far behind you already. And then I turn, take up my axe, and then I'm just going to take a swing at it. Fucking pond attacking me. Natural 20, pond. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Do the damage. A How million. does a pond die? Because <laughs> I feel like it's that's about to happen. 19 plus 10 is... 29. 29. Yep. So, okay, so 31 damage. Jesus, wow. Jesus. Uh You cleave through this thing with your, your axe, and you see that the pawn splits in two and then starts to slither away from you in flanking directions. There are now two of them. With my second attack, before one of them gets away, I'm going to swing back around with my axe, using my momentum, and just try to come down on it. 22 to hit. 22 hits. That's really good. 18 plus 4. 22 damage on the second hit. Uh, So, Guard, what does it look like when you kill half of this pond? (laughs) I think seeing (laughs) that cutting it made it split. I bring the axe down, and in the last moment, I swing it. So instead of hitting it with the blade, I, like, slap it like it's a fly swatter with the with the broad side of the axe, and it just... Uh, okay. Uh, the remnant half is going to try to overtake you. That's going to hit five points of bludgeoning damage and 20 points of acid damage as this thing gets a blob of itself up over your face and starts to corrode it away. Cool. The the stonework starts to, like, fizz and, like, little air pockets start to appear underneath, like, uh, you know you, you, ever, you know how, like, when, when stone gets eroded, you, there's, like, little pock marks start to appear on it? Oh, look out, God! That stuff really hurts! I'm gonna take my axe, and it's like I'm shaving as fast as I can. I'm gonna drag the blade <laughs> of my axe down across my face <gasps> okay. trying to cut this fucking thing off I'm gonna my say, head. I'm going to say this thing That's has an incredibly it. low AC and I believe you're rolling recklessly. If you miss, you're going to hit yourself. Well, let's hope I don't because I only have two hit points left. Oh, oh, boy. oh, boy. That's a 23? Yeah, you, yes. 16 damage. Oh, that was ended up being pretty good, That's actually. Not That's not bad. bad. That's not bad. You slice this thing off and kind of fling it away from you and it like splats back onto the ground and you see Reevesy run up behind you. I got And then he just, like, stabs it with the bee stinger on the end of his stick. And the thing, like, quivers, raises up a little bit, and then dies. Thank you. (laughs) No, I mean, really, thank you. I was certainly doomed to die a death. That's a lot of D words. I practice in my alliteration. Mr. Lapignon's really big on on, on literature and rhyming. Big fan of the rhymes. Huh. Reevesy, I don't understand where this is. I was walking into a tunnel. Where is this? And I'm just sort of swinging my axe around at all the what? darkness what? and purple. What? What? Um, that's a really good question. I'm really not entirely sure of the particulars. Uh, I do, I do know that um, we are supposed to be in the afterlife of the Eastern Wilds. But it seems kind of empty, 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 empty. There's a rope ladder I found. Well, that's great. Did it get you? Did, did it go anywhere? Can we use it to get out of here? Maybe if you climb it for more than six hours. Oh, that's a lot of climbing. 
All right, that sounds like a solid plan B. What's plan A? Well, there's all these tunnels. That's actually what I was sent to investigate. You see, in uh, over at the bathhouse, the Mykonids have been getting out using these blood vine tunnels, and uh, Mr. Lapiard can't leave because that would uh, fuck with the cycle of reincarnation. So he sent me to go investigate one of them, and it brought me here, but there's like a billion others. And by a billion, I mean 534, but I felt like expressing hyperbole in that moment. That's another thing I'm working on. And you don't know which one to go down. Well, one of them. Maybe not the one I used to come here. Did you happen to see a creature down here that was made of glass or crystal or maybe had a big face like an owl? Well, I didn't see no owl faces, but I did see a big glass monstrosity tinkering about. It was off in the distance, I I think. I'm not really sure how space works here. Could you point me in the direction that it went, please? Uh, He points in a direction, and you perceive him as having six arms pointing off in six different directions. Oh, my God. What? I see. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this place is a little strange. You said it's full of tunnels. Do the Myconids know how to traverse the tunnels? Well, they seem to is the thing. They've been using it to get out of the afterlife near the bathhouse. One second. I reached out into the jar. I unscrew it with the baby Myconid. Hello. Hey, how you doing, boss? I'm good. Glad to hear it. Do you know how to traverse these tunnels? And I hold the jar up and I swing it around. Tunnels, huh? Tunnels. Now, now for nothing, I'm no expert in tunnelage. But I think you just walk. I could be wrong. Wanna make that abundantly clear? I think for the time being, it's best you join the party. And I'm gonna pull him out of the jar and put him on my shoulder. You still have that crystal worm hunk. Oh, yeah. Here, look at this for a second. No, wait, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I feel weird. I'm gonna, I gotta, I gotta ask him he wants it first. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pick him up and put him on my shoulder. Okay. <laughs> Listen. We have to be quiet for a second. Reevesy, go, go quickly. Walk that way. <laughs> All right. Until I say stop. <laughs> stop. Okay. We're going to try to find our way out of here. But you have a mission. Aye, aye, boss. What's the mission? You have to steal something from Reevesy before we leave him. Oh, that's your brony? That'll be easy. What you want me to dig? I want you to follow your heart. Well, I don't got one of them, but I think you mean metaphorically, so no problem, boss. Whatever you want to take from him, just don't get caught. No problem. Also, do you want to be like eight times as big? Is that not an eventuality regardless? If you wanted to speed it up, we could do that. Yeah, why the hell not? Look at this, and I'm going to pull out a chunk of the crystal shard. He instantly shoots up. Go get the Mykonid scout stat block and put that into your fucking followers. <laughs> Mike and Scout? Sprout. Mike and Sprout. So yeah, he, I guess, grows to be like, he's like toadstool size. So he grows yeah. to be like a foot and a half tall. Yeah. Grows a big, gross, porous head. <laughs> oh, all right. This is, um, that was abrupt. There's a weird bit of crystal you got going on there. But, uh, hey, seem to do the job. Look at these guns. Look at these guns. <laughs> I'm glad you're with me, Bartleby. Reevesy, return. And I like now I look to my right and I see Bartleby. I look to my left. I see Reevesy. And I think to myself, be like Isaac. Guys, we have to go this way. And I start trying to walk the way that I think Isaac would walk when he's like in leader mode. And just like Isaac, I feel as though Guard has no idea what he's doing. No idea what he's doing. Also, no only clue. has two hit points. <laughs> God oh almighty. God. Jesus, Jesus. Isaac, you have Harissa uh, behind you on CJ. What did you do with that uh, Agra soldier, by the way? Did you just leave him in the snow? I got this adventurous, like, all right, we're going to go get this god, and yeah, we're about to go save the world. And he's like, ah, shit. Hold on. And he puts his hand on the back of CJ like he's about to do a K turn. Oh, yeah. (laughs) 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 Beep. Beep. 
Do you go back? Turns, turns CJ, yeah, and, he's, and he, he'll try and see if he finds the soldier. Uh, yeah, I think you do. I think you do. I think you've told him to get lost, and he's just kind of standing there in the snow, oh uh, old and terrified. Listen, old man. Mr. Ash Trevor, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, sir. I don't know where the hell I could possibly go. It looks like even the dawn isn't even where we left it. Listen here. You see this? This is Prometheus. Uh, hello, Prometheus? Prometheus survived in this snow all by his lonesome. Well, he, he does he does have a, a, a matte fur to keep him a little warmer, but I, I take your point. Our grown ass man. And then some, unfortunately. And then some, unfortunately. Now, I need you to take all of what's left of your soon to be dying age and get it together. Jesus. He snaps into a salute. <laughs> Isaac, I think... Now, you're gonna hop on... Hold on, hold on. You're gonna hop on this boy. We're gonna go find our friend, as well as possibly a god who's running away from, you know, the end of the world. Uh-huh. And we're gonna figure all this out. Or, you can die in this snow. Simple ass. And he gets on the... <laughs> On the back of CJ. I think um, Harissa is going to jump down and back onto Spinks just yeah, to make yeah, room yeah. for, yeah, yeah, for yeah, 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 the old yeah. guy because I've always just got five people on CJ. And all of you so. trudge <laughs> up the edge of what is a, a little bit of a lip, right? There's so little bit of an incline. And you reach the edge of a massive chasm. In the center of that chasm, the peaks of the spine of the eastern hills are just visible hundreds of feet down. And I think on the way down, Isaac is downloading all of the information about Jonathan that Porky gave to him since now Jonathan is no longer here. Uh, Harissa and June, you become privy to the fact that rumor had been circulating that Jonathan was going to abandon his position. The god known as the Anchor was retreating. And as Isaac is telling you this and telling you that Porky was very insistent about not mentioning it until it became a real problem, you are slowly making your way down a series of hairpin turns, this switchback that is winding its way down into this chasm. And every now and then the earth shakes a little rocks tumble into this pit and you all are acutely aware of the fact that if anyone puts a foot down wrong it is certain death anchor to what Jonathan's the anchor to what anchor to the world it's kind of like if someone I don't know if someone made a really stupid idea of a god or you know, an entity that was actually holding the entire planet to keep it from falling into the abyss. Maybe it's something like that, but that would be a stupid, stupid idea, concept. Nobody would believe anything like that. Harissa, go ahead and roll me uh, one of those survival checks at advantage, if you please. <coughs> That's better. A 23. On a 23, you do know something. Jonathan was the patron deity of your grandmother's home tribe of Tinin. He is a god of stability, persistence, order. Not like this. Did she mention like any of the kind of like the religious sort of like acts they did with and for him? You tell me. Uh, we haven't we haven't colored that in, so uh, I think I think on a twenty three, yes, right, like that's totally okay. uh, viable. But we haven't designed that, so you could tell me what that looks like. Well, I remember that the holy focus was a scarf with bells on. Maybe something with bells. I think that that makes a tremendous amount of sense. I think that there probably were almost like prayer bells that were set up because. Jonathan was ma is massive, right? Jonathan is the largest entity that you all have engaged with by some fucking measure. And so there was probably an element of like, for want of a very clear place to speak to the god face to face, mm -hmm. you, the Tanin, would 
put bells in the watchtowers, great gongs of these bells that would be rung in a pattern, kind of almost used like prayer wheels, right? It was to ring the bell was to offer a prayer to Jonathan that he might hear it. Harissa, as you're talking about this and thinking about this, you can't be sure if it is your mind and your memory playing tricks on you in this space or if it is a genuine thing that you perceive. But damned if you don't feel like you hear a bell coming from a cave opening that your eyes dial in on. Wait, shh. Can anyone else hear that from down there? And she's going to point at the cave opening. Sphinx, go go and check it out for me. She's going to jump down off of Sphinx so he can go take a look, see? Aye, aye, Captain! Be careful out there. You're the only god we can trust in these terrible times. <laughs> oh, he called me a god! And he's going to fall down. Uh, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Sphinx lands at the mouth of this cave. And it's a it's a weird sort of cavern. The exterior is all this like gray snow and ice capped rock. But the interior is not a stone cavern. The interior is pale, white, smooth, and hollow. Uh Sphinx is going to Hello, 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 hello. Down into the tunnel. And as Sphinx shouts, he hears back. Leave this place! Oh, that's not very nice. Um. And I need him to make me a wisdom saving throw. Uh, well, he got a nat one, uh, so. Sphinx is now frightened. Yeah, I, I feel like the shock of it, he just kind of like a scared dog kind of just like curls up like oh god and just kind of shakes there a little bit at the entrance oh my god uh y'all we gotta get over there you hear that i heard it uh actually you two did hear it so i need wisdom saves from you as well oh my god <laughs> so close to a that 20 but What'd i got get? a two <laughs> what's the total a five Harris is frightened yeah but if I'm not rolling it at disadvantage, that was a 22. 22. Okay. June. I mean, it's weird, right? But like, disembodied voices are not new. Let's go get him. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I don't want to go anywhere. Sephra. Here. No. Uh, Sephra. Mm -mm. That's, that's Sphinx in there. Come on. Look. Isaac, get this, hmm? get this super awesome boar. Moving. Let's go. Oh, come on, CJ. Let's go. Uh, Harissa, as part of the frightened condition, you cannot willingly move closer to the source of your fear. I think she's just planted in the snow. Like, where she was standing, she's not. She's just frozen. What is she feeling in this moment that she feels is so insurmountable that her legs won't move? The memories of all the pressure and weight that was put on her as a as a young girl and the kind of the training that was like pummeled into her almost literally sometimes suddenly the weight of the world is literally on her shoulders again and i feel like that is paralyzing her in this moment she's like she feels back in that nothing i do is good enough mindset i'm gonna lead these people who i love to disaster this whatever this is is the man who needs the water in this moment isaac you get a couple yards down this switchback and realize that harissa is not pulling it together in the way that you would expect her to i think at that point isaac is coming down from his high of anger with jonathan because that's literally all that's pushing him. He's been exhausted for days. And the yeah. only thing is just, I hate this type of individual so much <laughs> that in spite of that, I'm going to continue. And, rage. <laughs> <laughs> and he stops and he turns around and he notices that his, his right hand woman is not next to him. 
it's a different type of loneliness that he didn't realize he could feel anymore since uh, his best friend passed away. And so he, he said, oh, I'll, 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 I'll catch up. I'm going to go check on the captain. Hey, hey, uh, uh, uh captain, did you, did you do uh, move? Oh, man, you, you doing all right? Uh, 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 hey, hey, um, oh, I'm terrible at this. Let's just do some, uh, b- b- um, June, June, June. Think like June. Breathe, breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that sounds awful. Okay. Um, uh, okay, words, words, words to say to encourage. All right. Um, if you don't want to go down there, mm-hmm. you don't have to. But okay, I, <laughs> being me, um, which is very selfish, would prefer if you were down there. Because you keep us alive. <laughs> Somewhere June is just face palming. <laughs> he's trying, he's trying, he's trying. Uh, but uh, I can't, I, not this time, it's not going to work this time. I, um, this is hey. too much. Hey, it's all according to plan. <laughs> and you see this big ass smile just. I don't know what I'm doing, but... But... uh, Nothing ever goes according to plan, Isaac. How... We can only be lucky so many times. This... I... I am thankful I can't remember much of the desert, honestly. I don't know how... I can keep... I'm not going to be enough. For who? Anybody? For you, June, God? I mean, where is God? I've already let him down. I don't think that you needing to be enough for anyone is your job in this situation. We just want you to be you. I can't put an amount to who you are, Captain. I... I just know that whenever I need someone dependable, you got my back. I'm always making sure that it's you behind me. And trust and believe, I know that I'm not the leader that anyone deserves or expects. But the fact that you all still are going through this journey with me is is more than enough. And if somebody or something says otherwise, then they can go piss off as far as Jonathan has. Bastard. Asshole. That's why we're here. We gotta get... We gotta get... And he just loses the whole conversation. (laughs) Gets back into... (laughs) Um, Somehow, like in in Safra's head, as Isaac is speaking, whenever he gives a speech, he has this way of hitting these weird little kind of like places in Safra that it's kind of a, despite everything, despite all the flaws, he is still someone that she looks up to and she's, and she still wants to follow him wherever he goes. And he makes a good point. He's like, she does want to have his back. She, she will always be want to be there despite his flaws and that tweaks a little thing in her brain of people are still worthy despite their flaws even in spite of their flaws and the fear fades and we see The four of you make your way down to this cave entrance, and I want to give Harissa a moment to comfort Sphinx, if she would like one. Yes! uh, I've been too mean to Sphinx lately, poor little bugger. And then he feels Safra's hand on his head, and she kind of 
pulls it down along his like neck and his back in a long slow sort of stroke it's all right i'm here with you and you're here with me we have each other yes yes i'm ready (laughs) and he like wipes away a little tear he's like she touched me Okay, good. Mr. Lapignon asked me to read something he called a mid-roll. I'm not entirely sure why this particular roll is below average, but I'll try to do my best anyway. Here goes. If you're caught up on all the rally, apparently there's a bunch more stories over on patreon.com slash unbalanced encounters. It says here that a bunch of guests have been on shows like Blight at the Museum, The Odyssey, and more. So if you're craving more unbalanced encounters, that sounds like a good place to go. And you could also go join a Discord, which I suppose is some kind of cult. According to this, they meet every other week to listen to new episodes together. So if that's one of your proclivities, go to discord.gg slash unbalanced encounters. Also, apparently, Unbalanced Encounters has gotten its first ever sponsor, and the whole crew is real jazzed about it. It says here to say, this episode brought to you by Magpie Games, and hit play. Play? Oh, right, got it. Do you like pirates? Leviathans? Our three Corsairs Care for a Baby epic, The Otter Sea. If you answered I to any of these questions, then you need to play the game we played and loved, Rapscallion. Rapscallion is a strange pirate fantasy tabletop RPG powered by the apocalypse and built for telling thrilling tales of swashbuckling fantasy on the great sea. Alongside your found family crew, you'll fight the law, witness the weird, and join the free. For our bonus arc, we had to parlay with Whistler, Rapscallion's artist, writer, and designer to hornswoggle a preview. But you, you lucky dog, can get your hands on Rapscallion much sooner. Shove off to magpiegames.com slash Odyssey to join the Backer Kit campaign and get your copy. Oh boy, pirates! I love a good pirate story. I can't wait to hear all the ones you guys tell with this Rapscallion thing. And I know it would mean a lot to the cast if you showed your support by going to that link. Oh, what was it? Uh, oh yeah, magpiegames.com slash odyssey. Anyway, I thought this role went pretty well after all. Thanks for being such a great audience, and I'll see you in the episode. And we're going to cut back to guard. <laughs> so, Reevesy, <laughs> who exactly were you here to get? Oh, I, I wasn't here to get anyone in particular. I was just here to, to figure out what's going on with these blood vine tunnels. Oh, right. Any ideas, Bartleby? I mean, I, I, I have ideas about turtles, if you want to know about turtles. I don't really have any ideas about our current predicament. What about blood vines? Oh, yeah, the blood vines. Yeah, we be using them. And he kind of like his eyes, his like non-existent eyes, kind of like you get that. How, how do I want to put this? He doesn't have eyes. The Mykonids are just holes for all orifices. But you get the sense that his eyes sort of roll back into his head as he has a little bit of a hive mind moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, And (laughs) he he goes, we use them to get in and out of the afterlife. They provide about the the Blavine Golem, I think. I never seen one. But the others, maybe? What's a Vine Golem? Uh, I think it's a big dude made of blavine. B- big like me? Sometimes. They can kind of change shape. Hmm. I think... <laughs> I think if we're just walking forward, it's going to be a while before Guard <laughs> decides that that's not what we should do. I mean, there are openings to these tunnels. They don't seem to be anchored into anything. They're just kind of holes in this purple nether that you're moving through. Uh, But they're present, and you could pick one and take one. This is a weird place. You got that right. And Bartleby, you said the way you follow the vines is you kind of just pick a direction and you go, right? Well, they're tunnels. They only really seem to have the one ins and the one outs. So maybe 
we just pick a tunnel and go. That feels reasonable to me. You want us to uh, have like a mud wrestling competition to pick or what's the situation? No, I'll pick that one. And Gar just arbitrarily points at one and without hesitation starts walking towards it. Cool. You make it there very, very quickly. Uh, as a matter of fact, maybe a little too quickly. And I need go go ahead and roll me. This is honestly just a luck check. That's a five. Okay. Uh, that is that is very good. It's a lucky, lucky five. number five. Yep. Yep. <laughs> the luckiest number. Everybody knows. <laughs> Did you know number five is actually my lucky number? It was my favorite number for a long time. Oh, really? It no longer is. Why not? What's your favorite number now? Because I've matured past having <laughs> favorite numbers because I'm not seven, Emily. Because right. I'm an adult and numbers don't have wow. meaning. Okay. Well, speak to numerologists and they'll tell you different. What about what about binary? I don't have that much money, so I'll I might have to rent Nary. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna shut the fuck up. That was yeah. a pretty bad but that was a pretty good bad joke. I think. I think that was, that was terrible. Binary, red nary, come I, on. I hurt now. Come on. I am in pain. Come like, on. Physical. Guard. The three of you wander down this telescoping blood vine tunnel and it imparts a vague sense of familiarity after a while i would like you to please roll me a history check that's a 10 which is pretty good for me on a 10 you don't get this particular memory very clearly but you get a vague sensory association these blood vines, they, they feel like something that you remember. And you try to think about like, well, you know, we've got the blood tree. We've been dealing with that for a little while. It's certainly something that has come up with like Sligo. And it's been kind of a, a running motif of these last, you know, this last eight months or so. But it's, it's earlier than that. And it only really clicks as you begin to perceive a little bit of light at the end of this tunnel. The palace in Altair. Mm. You can't quite put your finger on why, but the thought is interrupted, and you lose it as you see torchlight clearly from the end of this tunnel. Something up ahead. It looks like torchlight. Let's be quiet. Got it, boss. And Bartleby. <laughs> Good luck on your mission. And I try to wink even though I don't have a face. Um, and I'm going to very carefully take out my axe, trying to be as quiet as possible, get low, and start slow walking towards the torchlight. As you get closer, you realize that there uh, are bars over the end of this portal. There's like a grate. Can I see through the bars? Like, do I see any people or any room or anything? No, you see kind of an intricate mosaic immediately in front of you. It's kind of far away, too. It's like uh, maybe 10, 12 feet ahead of this portal. Okay. As quietly as possible. I look in one direction. I look in the other direction. I lean back, and I kick the grade as hard as I can to smash it out of place. Uh, give me an athletic check. Oh, that was almost so good. 11? Okay. Uh, on an 11, you kick it forward and it easily clatters off its hinges and then falls back directly into your path again as it tries to fall back i'm trying to catch it yeah you catch it and you push it back what's weird is that you would expect to be needing to hold it up sort of perpendicular to your body right like you'd expect it to fall for you down it's falling back towards you so you're doing just like a, a full chest press with this thing can I knock it off out of place, or is it like yeah? You on give the it a hinge? shove. You give it a shove. You give it a shove. You've already kicked the hinge off, so you give it a shove, uh, and it kind of clatters above this portal and comes to a rest. All right, I I, I'm, I don't move for a second. Any new noise or anything though? Uh, go ahead and give me a stealth check with disadvantage. With it with disadvantage, that's a twenty-two on my Jesus stealth check. Jesus Christ! Yeah, you're fine. Nobody notices this. Gung! 
And then I do like a little wave with my hand and I hop out of the tunnel. When you when you hop out of the tunnel, you realize uh, as soon as your body is outside of the tunnel that you are like fully perpendicular to gravity. Uh, this is a hole in the floor. Do I? Whoop? So you like hang on to the edge. But do I like readjust it in the new gravity, or am I like as you're coming doing sideways through. gravity in a regular gravity world? You re- you readjust as soon as you come through. So as soon as you come through this hole in the ground, you're like hanging on to the ledge of this thing. Okay, I'll pull myself up. You find yourself in a dark room, meticulously decorated with mosaics and tiles, poorly lit, and containing quite a large number of crates. And you hear some commotion coming from down the hall that leads away from this room. I gesture for my new adventuring party to come through with me. You, I, I am going to ask you to pick one of the two of them to come through first. Bartleby. As soon as Bartleby gets up, I need you and Bartleby to make me dexterity saving throws. Um, I got an eight and uh, Bartleby got a 10. God, you have so little HP. This was not going to be a ton. We'll see what, we'll see. If I, if it's a D4, if I roll a three or higher, you're unconscious. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a one. Whoa. You and Bartleby you both one. take one point of fire damage you as one you oh see an explosion oh, yeah. barreling toward you, and you just grab Bartleby and trust fall back into the pit. Uh, and you are jettisoned back out into the nether space. Maybe we try a different tunnel. Ow. That was a good uh, paper effort. A for effort, everyone. <laughs> Where the hell was that place? I don't know. It looked similar to the tunnels under Agravar. Huh. Okay. We'll try another one then. That sounds good. Come on, Reevesy. You all see the mouth of this tunnel. You hear movement from deep inside. What do you do? Fucking draw my bow, boys. You can't really see the bottom. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Is the drop straight down like a well? Or is it like a slide? Uh, It's not perfectly straight. It's definitely not like a slide. It's kind of got this jauntiness to it. Weird angles. What if we tie the rope to... Mm Mm-hmm one of our bows and shoot it down there and hook it up to something up here. Sure. Like a grapply type. Is yeah, like mine? a grapply sure. typey thing. This is the closest our campaign has ever gotten to there's a locked door in front of you. What do you do? <laughs> you're the one who's like, don't just jump down. You can't see the bottom. <laughs> we were going to take the easy way and you were like, no, now, Patrick, no, 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 no. Don't do that. I'm not climbing down without some type of support. Cause sure. Yes, okay. I'm at disadvantage. That's that's fine, <laughs> but like rope exists. You all I, have I rope. Said I, had oh, rope. I thought I left mine at the uh, thing. All right, well Isaac baby doesn't have rope. That's yeah. fine. Y'all, we have a giant boar behind us. We just wrap it to CJ. <laughs> oh yeah, done. Uh, yeah, uh, Harissa will shoot the rope down as far as it will go with her longbow, and then tie to CJ the other end. Can I get uh, marching order, climbing order, please? I'm happy to go first. I Lead mind. the way, Captain. I'll abseil down. It's fine. Abseil? Belay? Belay. Do you not know what abseiling is? I guess belaying is kind of what you're doing. Yeah, no, I don't know what abseiling, <laughs> abseiling is. Abseiling is I when speak you're in, English. It's, it's a rock climbing thing. You kind of like kick off, you know, like you go woo, 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 down. Okay. I'm looking, up. I'm looking this up. So climbing. <laughs> Repelling. Anti-climbing. Repelling. Repel. Repelling. Oh, or belay. That yeah, repel. Belay. Oh, that's so that's so interesting. It's called uh repelling in the known universe, except England and Germany, where it's called abseiling. <laughs> <laughs> today I learned. And today you all learned as well. You're welcome, listeners. I learned nothing. I got to take <laughs> none of that in. <laughs> None of it is being absorbed. That is staying out right. of the box. You all begin uh, to climb down. Before we go down, maybe, can CJ bring us back up if we hold on to the rope? If he walks away from us and he, the rope is on him, it's like a um, 
pulley? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can he like you back can it up? up a pulley, sure. And yeah, yeah. Like we can could do like a back it up. Couple tugs. Backs it up all the time in camp. You don't see him. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> We're moving on. Can I just say I will have the old man with CJ. I will have okay. him. You're there gonna with leave. Him. You're yes. gonna leave the, the soldier. Hey, uh, soldier. Right. What's your name? <laughs> I have this. Give me a second. Oh yeah, we're just oh, calling man. him old man this whole time. <laughs> hey, old my man. name's uh, my name's uh, pr- 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 Private Grum. Private Private Greenwall Grum. Uh, thank you very much, Silent Bard, for that name. Thank you. Silent Bard. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Feels like a, a little bit of a late time to be asking that, but uh, you're, you're listen. Boss I here, saved so. I saved you from a demon, yeah, and then yeah, saved yeah. you from the abyss known as the snow outside. Uh, I uh, get uh, a little bit of leeway time. hundred percent. My, my captain is more important to me mm-hmm. than you, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. I went Understood. to help them first. Chain of command. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I just genuinely like her better than you, in all ways, shapes, and forms. All right. Well, I'm gonna sit with that. Just as a person, then I guess, and not as a soldier. You see this boar? I, I... <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Make sure that this boar survives, even over your own life. I, I, I reckon that if that boar died, it would be my life. So understood. Fantastic. I'm glad you're with us. And you repel. <laughs> uh, you begin to repel down, and uh, about a hundred feet down this tunnel. You see a hole in this white surface. And now that you're sort of in it, right? Now that you're rappelling down it, you see that it's pockmarked slightly. And occasionally there are stretches of the material that this, ma- that this wall is made out of kind of spanning the gap, almost creating a lattice effect in places. Harissa is the first to repel down to, again, about this 100-foot mark. And Harissa, you see that there's almost a um, hollow. The word that comes to mind is, is ulcer, which is kind of disquieting. Ew. Blood vines leading away from this tunnel and down. I'll wait for Isaac and June to join me in that space. These again. <sighs> All right, decision time. Terrible, hideous way of death or the other way of death i mean there was there was one of those vine monstrosities that we saw at the ball here in the snow so maybe this has something to do with maybe i'm being a little hard on jonathan and possibly the, no jonathan's an asshole what and also like what is happening you keep on swearing at jonathan and things get worse maybe we should stop swearing at jonathan huh okay okay maybe he's a sensitive soul Maybe he just needs some... Possibly, you know, maybe using positive reinforcement? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Should yeah. Should be you know. nice? Uh, Harissa, mm-hmm. in your head specifically, you hear... Get out. She's gonna, with her internal monologue... Is that you, Jonathan? Get out. I'll take that as a yes. Okay. Good job, Jonathan. <laughs> Running from your pro I I don't know if I can I don't know if this is this isn't feeling she, right, y'all. She's gonna keep thinking, um We are here to help. We have helped Sligo. We have helped Gambald. Let us help you. You have no idea what you mortals have taken. Get out. We have taken nothing. We are here (laughs) to make sure no one takes anything else. (laughs) And the rope starts to sway. Uh Uh-oh. Oh. As the shaft that you're in starts to tremble. What? Steady on, steady on. She's going to pat the wall. Like, shh. Jonathan, your earthquakes of trembles, I'm assuming that is fear. Wonderful work. You're doing great. Is that is that better? Am I doing the thing right? <laughs> We're all going to die, aren't we? He was saying that some people stole something or people are taking things from him. We have to... I think the blood vines is the way to go. Maybe they are stealing things like those mic dudes keep stealing things. They're definitely doing something to piss Jonathan off. So I think we should find out. 
So we're taking the blood vine. Squelch, squelch, squelch. Tunnel. You know, you know, we always gonna take the. We blood always. Vine. <laughs> uh, the blood vine tunnel, unlike the tunnel that you just came from, is a sheer drop. All right, I'm gonna move the rope from our initial path. I'm just gonna fling the rest of it down. With that, we are going to jump back. Uh, guard, you are just picking another one of these tunnels at random. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Go ahead and roll me another lock check, please. That is a 16. Guard, you find another one of these tunnels literally just by, like, turning left, and then it's just, like, in front of you. Mm -hmm. If you turn back around, it's, like, not in your periphery. It's not actually, but, like, then you turn, and it, you get it. You start heading down. And it doesn't take you actually all that long to see daylight coming from the far end. And as you approach you see a somewhat familiar motif. An eagle holding fast to grapevines. Mm -hmm. Cast in bronze and sort of mounted into the far wall. The last time you would have seen that symbol would have been the glimpses of the palace when you were being crated. I turned to Reevesy and I turned to Bartleby. This path might be more dangerous than the one with the fire. I don't know if this is going to lead to the glass creature. Roll me a perception check. It's a 21. You hear a very distant (laughs) explosion. And you hear a much closer man. What in the fuck? (sighs) None of these idiots can do anything correctly. And a man that you know to be High Scepter walks past the portal and you hear a door open and boom, slam. Reevesy, do you have any way to heal me? Remind me how it works with guardians. Do potions of greater healing work on them? I don't know. I've never had one before. Might as well give it a go. Uh, Reevesy hands you a greater, uh, a potion of greater healing. I pour uh, it over my head. Go ahead and heal 4d4 plus 4 HP. It, like, trickles through the filigree and absorbs. That's not bad. That's, uh, 10 plus what? What's it? Plus 4? Plus 4, Right, yeah. I have 14. No, I have 15 hit points. Yay. Nice. So that was the fucking high scepter. When that clicks in, in Guard's brain... Because you, you've seen this guy, right? Yeah. Like he presented you to the Empress Art. Reevesy. Yeah. Bartleby. Wait. You do not have to follow me if you don't want to. But my goal, my mission, that which drives me and gives me power based on the promise I made to Demoiselle, stands beyond that portal. I have to go. But if you don't want to, I understand. That was the High Scepter. The High Scepter works for the Emperor. The Emperor is beyond that portal. I have to kill the Emperor. I'm going. Eyes open. And then I jump through the portal. You walk into High Scepter's office. This is a room you are familiar with. I point at a shelf that looks like it's covered with like uh uh I don't know it's like the it's like his trophy shelf it's like super yeah. prized possessions Absolutely. Weird lots stuff. of awards Bartleby. lots of self indulgent bullshit high scepter of the month award Bartleby right. grab something that you like <laughs> <laughs> on it boss uh, that's a nat 20 on a fucking... Oh, so he's going to steal something amazing for the <laughs> Lycanids, I hope. Uh, guard, Bartleby grabs a, a, a rod, a scepter off of the high shelf mm-hmm. uh, huh. and huh. pockets it. And you immediately, on, on this nat 20 sleight of hand, you immediately clock that it is identical uh, to the one that the man in the desert used to exert control over you. Um, I'm going to look on the table. Is there something that looks like a like a schedule or like a like a like a calendar or something? Give me an investigation check. That's a 12. Okay. Uh yeah, on a 12. Uh, there's a, there are a couple of things. Um, he does have a, a diary that you can steal a glance at, which I'll give you basically kind of one question against. Uh, there is a letter uh, that you can steal a uh, a glance at as well. If the if it does not mention the Emperor, I don't care. 
Okay, the letter doesn't mention the Empress Sun. Uh, the diary uh, does mention that High Scepter has a meeting with the Empressar tomorrow. Okay. I run to the window. Where am I? You are in Altair. It is a city that you are not terribly familiar with. And in this moment, it is a little less familiar for the plume of smoke emanating from the museum district mm -hmm. of the city. <laughs> Odd. <laughs> Um, how nice and big is the desk? Oh, it's massive. It's massive. And it's made of elderwood, which you're familiar enough with to know on site. Is there like a balcony or like a big window or is it more like an archery yeah. slit? It's a, it's a, there's, it's a huge, huge, huge window. Perfect. I'm going to pick up the desk and throw it out the window. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Please put in the diary before you do, like... PM get fucked and then give me an athletics check. Twenty two. <laughs> so good. People screaming in the street added chaos to an already chaotic moment in the capital city of the Empire. Do I recognize any of the architecture of the castle? Like, if I look out the window that I just smashed, do I recognize, oh, that's where the church would be, that's where the armory would be, or do I have no no recollection of that You stuff? could give me another history check. I am utterly confident that's the throne room. As I roll a natural one, minus one for a zero. <laughs> yeah. You, you look down at what we, the audience, very clearly see as, like, just like a gatekeeper's house, right? Like, just a little, like, tiny apartment attached to the gate of this very central building. And you're like, that's it. There's a bed in there. That's, that's where they live. And then I'm going to pick up Reevesy, pick up Bartleby, and then with the my boots, I'm going to start climbing down the outside of the tower to that building. You put one foot over the threshold and die. As a ninth level disintegrate tears you apart atom by atom. I have an extraordinarily important question for you, Cinder. Mm hmm What does Guard look like without his body? I think that without his body, Guard looks a bit like the smoke spirit, except there is no mask, and he's not dark in coloration. It's almost like heat waves coming up off the road it's sort of like a translucent smoke that's sort of like made of ripple and it's not big either it's like the size of like a volleyball with these little pillars of ripple kind of emanating above and below you feel yourself discorporate in this moment and then everything is sunshine and lilies and the sound of a gently babbling brook. God? God, is that you? Hello. Demoiselle, larger than life in her sleek, slightly hunched black robes. Oh dear. What happened to your bodyguard? I was on my way to help bringing you the justice I promised you. I see. Something discorporated me. And she reaches a feathered hand out and plucks at the space where a bond should tie you to your body. And there's nothing there. Well, that does complicate things quite a bit. I appreciate your sacrifice, guard. 
and I intend to make good on my promise to return you as many times as it takes to finish this. But you have no body for me to send you back into. Perhaps something could be done about this. Ganbald, darling. God? What in the hell has happened to your body, man? I was discorporated. Oh my. What was that like? That sounds like a fascinating experience. Was it painful? Not really, no. Wonderful. I'll have to make sure to write that down. Oh, you wanted to know how to send him back. Yes, 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 yes. Um, you know what? I don't know. I suppose we could just sim simply send him back like this. Would that be uh, amenable to you, God? Or were you looking for a, a, a bit of a more heavy-hitting model, so to speak? Will I be able to carry the axe? Who? Oh. What a good question. That axe was magical, yes? Yes, it was, darling? Good, okay. Disintegrate won't... Disintegrate the axe. That's good. That's good. You've got to make sure you read the bylaws of these things. Very tricky language in some of them. Also, Reevesy is back there, as well as a Mycadid named Bartleby, which, by the way... Mycadids have names? How odd. I think that you should reevaluate your relationship with the Mycanids. Anyway, they're both back there with the axe, so if they're still alive, they might need my help. And also, the Emprazar's there. I don't think you're going to be carrying your axe for a little bit, guard. You're going to need to find a suitable vessel. Some magic armor or structure that can bear out your form. You're going to want to find something pretty well done up in filigree, if you catch my drift. What happens if it's not done up enough in filigree? Well, there are better and worse corporeal forms for you to take. I would, whatever form you figure out how to manifest into will have its limitations, I'm sure. I think I can handle that. In the interim, I, I don't know if it would be the wisest to send you back into whatever sitch you were in that, you know, kind of led to your ultimate demise. Are, are you sure you wouldn't like to corpor corporealize somewhere a little bit more safe? Reevesy and Bartleby are back there. Hmm. Would you be able to get them out? There's not much that we can do from here. We can send you back, and that's fortuitous. I can send word to Matron. See if she'll do me this favor. If they can be brought back safely, I'll go wherever I need to. Also, maybe not a big deal, but the axe that you infused with your magic powers probably in the hands of the Empress are now. She shoots a look over to Ganbald, and Ganbald gives her a, a little bit of a nod. We'll see if we can't get that whole situation cleaned up with Matron. And we'll see. If it is in the hands of this Empress are, I will turn it off remotely or something. Are you ready? Yes. Then let's begin. Uh, the four of you are rappelling down a blood vine path. And this is a pretty smooth bore straight shot straight down, right? And so it's actually a lot harder going. You don't really have anywhere else to sort of lean up against or, or hold on to but the rope. You all make your way down into uh, another one of these white tunnels. And, and this one... Uh, is it's a very long, narrow hallway. So no drop, perfectly horizontal. The bottom is really flat, like almost ivory in color and texture. And you see that down the far end, it ends in what looks like a room. There's a there's an actual door. Huh. I I will I will open the door. I will be brave. And I will open the door. <clears throat> Sphinx uh, goes up on his hind legs and sort of like walks over. Remember the last right. time something like this happened to Mr. Sphinx? <laughs> All right. I will, I will look and tell you what it is. And as he flings open the door, his eyes are closed also. 
And then okay. he's going to open one eye yeah. <laughs> after the fact and see what happens. You see a large room, maybe 60 foot across, uh, with a vaulted ceiling high and made of this same kind of bony material. And as Sphinx kind of gets the lay of the land, he sees that he's standing on an outer lip that wraps around the room. There are stairs that go down uh, into the sort of main body of this chamber. And in the center, probably about 30, 40 feet in diameter, is a pit. And in that pit are lots and lots and lots of dead skeletons myconids and at the top of the pile pushing a very heavy axe off of himself is Reezy <gasps> it's alright it's just the pit of death and <laughs> and Reezy oh that's reassuring Reezy wait the pit of death wait what <laughs> oh we're all dead again oh lord is this the bathhouse it doesn't look like the bathhouse well, June doesn't have a tail again. Uh, Harris is gonna <laughs> walk up and like look past Sphinx to see Reevesy. Huh? Oh, my head! Oh, gods! Why are you Who's playing there? amongst some skeletons? What is going on? I'm not playing. I was dropped here. <laughs> She's gonna look up like what? <laughs> uh, give me a perception check. DC twenty. And that twenty. <laughs> Yes! For a 26. Mm. Uh, Harissa, you, you see, see everything. the outstretched bony claw of a dragon stapled together to a human femur, supported by a plank of wood, studded with shards of glass, suck itself back up through the ceiling, and a portal vanishes. What in the souls like? How big was the hand? About the arm of a person. Big Paul sized, give or take. You see you see the cricket kickers falling from the ceiling. Wait. Is that Oh my god, it's guard's boots. Uh, she's gonna Yeah, guard's dead. What? what? She's gonna run down to the pit. What's this room? Oh, hey Reezy. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my aching everything. Reevesy, get off of me. Who the hell are you? <sighs> what do you mean, who the hell am I? It's me, it's Bartleby. Oh, I'm big, that's right. The the mushroom, the myconid, the little one. We did the whole thing with some weird bit of crystal. It's fine. What? Where did you just come from? What was that hole in the ceiling? Who dropped you here? Where is God? What happened? Why are his boots here and not him? Why are you saying he is dead? Well, because he's dead. God's dead. God can't actually really die, so this makes no sense. I mean, Demoiselle might try to send him back, but he did kind of disintegrate. Where? where? But we were in the... I think you said it was the High Scepter's room? What? The High Scepter? There was a scepter up high! And Reezy, like, <laughs> takes the scepter that uh, Bartleby stole and, like, waves it around. Have I seen something like that? Mm, we forgot it exists because no, it flew into Oh, uh, okay. No, I'm saying oh, High yeah. Scepter type stuff that's, like, oh. government... I mean, yeah. you know who High Scepter is. Okay. Or at least by name. Oh, I always thought it was a person. Hmm. So you, we have the High Scepter here. Reevesy has it. Well, it, yeah. was, uh, it was a scepter that was up real high, and we were in its office. Guard picked up its desk and threw it through a window, and then tried to follow it out the window, and then just instantly disintegrated. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Wait, so he's dead? That's what I said three times now, yes. But we... we... From what I've been told by God, he can't die. Well, he can die. He just comes back. Oh. Oh, okay. But so he usually... He... he can't come back into that body anymore, so that's something. No, yes, because it's syndic... Oh, that's problematic. Not sure how that one's going to work out. Oh, my. We waited around for him for, like, five seconds, and then uh, some big, spooky, glass golem wood bone thing came and got us out of there. Okay, talk to me about that. What? Who? I don't know. You didn't ask questions. You were just like, okay, I'll be taken by this golem. 
we would be dragged pretty quickly. They would, they were, they were, this, the, the, the golem was excited to get rid of us. I think they thought that we would probably die down here. I'm not sure why they didn't leave us to die in Altair. Uh, Ravesy, do you yeah. know where, what are we in right now? That's a fucking nat 20 on Reezy's yeah, religion check. Yeah, go on, Reezy. Yeah. <laughs> That's the third nat 20 I think I've rolled go in this off, game. Go off, Reezy. Go Jesus off. Jesus Christ. Uh, he looks around for a second. Well, we're in a mass grave. Uh -huh. That seems deducible pretty readily. I think if we're in a mass grave... And he, he like, shifts around a little bit, and um, he pulls out, a, like, a severed leg. Like, the bone, right? He pulls out, like, this a skeleton's leg. Uh, and he, uh, he says... You can kind of see there's just, uh, there's some tattoo ink that's gotten kind of down to the bone here. These are tannin. Uh So we're probably inside Jonathan. Inside who? Uh, Jonathan. Okay, I was making Why sure. does Jonathan have all of my ancestors in his fucking belly? What is happening? Why are all these dead tannin here? Well, that's that was... That's where the tannin buried the dead for a long time was, in, with, was with Jonathan. I read a book about this like two days ago. Oh, so you're on some type of mission of some sort? You were getting all the intel and everything? Yeah, Mr. Lapignon sent me through one of the Bloodvine portals. So, Luna has portals not only to Demoiselle's plane, but also within Jonathan? The portals seem to kind of go wherever the Bloodvine golems need them to. But why would they need to go to Jonathan? Maybe there's something they want to steal. Is there anything good in here? I mean, a lot of bones. A lot of dead mic in it. Not super comfy with that. Maybe we should get y'all out of there. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Well, let's get out of the pit. <clears throat> They're just, like, wading through skeletons. But you have a point, because the Jonathan voice in my head was saying that mortals kept taking things. The Emperor is obviously after something that Jonathan has, and Jonathan is trying to hide it more or run away or something. Oh, poor Jonathan. Maybe I've been too hard on him. Guard, you pop into existence uh, behind everyone in the doorway. Hey, guys. Guard? What the? Oh, my God. Hi. Hey, hi. Yes, please tell me what we see. It looks a little bit like a ghost Pokemon. He is a uh, an orb of this sort of shimmery light, sort of gl almost like uh, like like uh, that like white glitter smoke kind of vibe, with two little hands that are sort of swinging where they would swing if he had arms, but you don't see arms, and he is hovering probably like a little shorter in eye line than like June, so. You know, like maybe like four feet off the ground. The face is 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 still faceless, but it has those two lines going down it in the same way that guard's faceless mm -hmm. uh, stone head has those two lines going down it. I I found you. I'm gonna run up with my quarter staff. June, it, who the fuck are you? It, we just heard that he it's lost me. his body. It's guard. This is what's inside guard, or was. What is something only guard would know? One night, when you were very upset, you and I sat by the river and smashed rocks. She'll lower her staff and then go up to shove him. How dare you fucking go off like that? I'm sorry. You left us. You left me. What the fuck was that all about? This whole time that we've been traveling, there has been something that... I don't know. I thought maybe it was like me. I thought maybe it would have been another guardian. And I don't know. There's just all this family stuff happening. We, we were just with Isaac's parents and your parents and all the weird stuff with Harissa's parents, good and bad. I just, I don't know. I was, I'm sorry. It was stupid. I was so worried and she's gonna try to hug his weird plastic body. 
Yeah, it's kind of like you're squeezing like cold fog. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do it alone. I know I don't have to do it alone, but those creatures in that cave, I mean, look at you. What about me? I, I know that you're still young, but all of you are so fragile. Says the guy with no body. <laughs> Says the guy that is eternal. Isaac, I I know that I don't know as much as most of you, but I also know that even in the time that we've spent together, all of you are going to end. And I don't want you to end very quickly because years feel like a long time, but I also don't think they feel like a long time. And I think that when you're gone, there will be a lot more years. And I would rather have there be more years where you are here. So I'm sorry that I ran away, or rather didn't ask you to come with me, but I felt like it was safer. I understand. Just glad you're okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm sorry for pushing you. I didn't feel it. <sighs> uh, let us move somewhere where there are not so many dead bodies. Yeah, this is this is a lot. Saffron. You seem to have a history of some sort with this area. Some you could say that, Information yes. from your father as well as from yourself. Uh -huh. Is there anything that was very rare or a treasure of sort that y'all knew about? Uh, so this was about um, what they were trying to steal from Jonathan that they might be stealing, that they might want to try and like find or something in Jonathan. Uh, go ahead and roll me a survival check at advantage. 28. Many of your grandmother's stories were intentionally fanciful. They were woven in such a way that they could impart the message that they needed to impart while capturing the mind of a child. And the thing that you remember is the room full of very special toys. You remember that your great-grandmother had a staff that could make it rain or snow whenever she wanted, and that the sentinels that you knew as defenders of your home could be outfitted with large firework cannons. Your adult mind starts to process that those were weapons, and that they might be very valuable indeed. And you reach for a fragment of that story that doesn't quite come into focus yet. Because that thought is interrupted by the absolute lunacy of naming an automaton pancakes. also supposed to read out new patrons whatever that means uh kelvin gardner and slayer b thank you for supporting unbalanced encounters your sacrifice will not be in vain gee that's a little dark isn't it well, anyway it also says that i'm supposed to read out our league of rally defenders Darlene Wallace, Dark Steel Panda, Derek Silverstone, Elderberry, GamerTube HD, Lord Dreamer, Lucas Carter, Michael McFarlane, Randolph Jenkins, and Reshia Snivy. Oh boy, there sure are a lot of yous. Thank you very much for your ongoing support and defense of the rally universe. All right, everybody, I think that's it for me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did, and I'll see you soon. All right, bye.